Welcome back to part three of this NavMesh agent tutorial set showing you how to change the speed of the agent dynamically and also to how to control the different costs for the areas on the NavMesh. Right, in this part we're going to modify the code so that the agents can walk as they were before, cross the road at the crossings, but when there's a panic event and they forget that they're meant to be crossing at the crossing, they'll just wander onto the road. Or they won't wander, they'll flee onto the road. So we're going to set up a position that we want to be like an evacuation point. And I've still got my sphere that I was using before sitting in here. So I'm going to use that. It doesn't matter what you use. Uh, I'll use this sphere and I'll put it down. Let's say that when they need to evacuate, they need to evacuate to this point here. And I'll just make sure that's down on the nav mesh like that. So this is our evacuation point. We're then going to program that into our code. So open up your wander script. First of all, you'll need another public at the top to bring in that sphere. Object sphere. And then we're going to tell the agents that they need to go to the evacuation point when we press the spacebar. So this will be if, this is inside the update above the existing if statement. If input.get key down is a space like that, then we're going to set the agent destination. Let me copy this code and make it the sphere transform dot position like that. Now, currently they're still going to try and avoid the road when they're trying to get to this sphere, but that's okay. So save that. Let's go back into Unity and you want to grab your capsule, in fact all of them, select all of them. Go down to the code where the sphere is exposed at the bottom and drag and drop that sphere into the code so that they all know to evacuate to that sphere. Okay, so now press play and they should be getting around. Press the space bar and they will go to the sphere. One of them went on the road, but the majority of them didn't. And it will be based on the cost that they calculate. So there's me hitting the space again and they're going down and they're pretty much staying away from the road. It's only when the cost of where they are and where they need to get to is going to add up to the smallest value for them that they will go on the road. But let's say that we just want to let them forget that the road is a high cost whatsoever. We will reset the area cost for the road. So remember back in the navigation window in the areas we set up this uh, user area called road and we set it to 10. What we're going to do in our code is reset the value of what road is. To do that you need to know the index number of the area that you want to change. In this case the index number of road will be 3. So walkable is 0 and then the next one is 1, 2, 3. So this is 3. Back in our code when we hit the space bar, before we set the destination, we're going to go agent dot set area cost, and we're going to pay index three for the area cost, and we're going to set that area cost to one, so that the road becomes the same cost to go along as the crossings and also the sidewalk as well. Now, what we want to do after the panic is over is we want them to resume wandering around. So we have to set the area cost for the third area back to 10. So just copy that line there. And what we're going to do is put that where we reset our position, which is in here where we go back to wandering again. So that after we've hit the evacuation area we will just automatically go find another random position to go to and we'll set it back to 10 here so that after they've panicked they've made it to the evacuation and then they'll just go back to wandering as before. Right so save that and let's go back here and press play. Okay so now they're going along their business staying on the road 
but now I'm panicking them and you can see straight as the crow flies to the evacuation point which takes them straight across the road. So from here you can now create quite a crowd by selecting all of your capsules and hitting Control D a couple of times. Press play and you'll get a lot of agents wandering around and staying off the road and staying out of each other's way as well because that's part of the system. Then you hit the spacebar and they panic and go down to the evacuation point. Right, so if you want them to keep their distance from each other as well, what you can do for a particular agent in the inspector is modify the obstacle avoidance values here. So if you change this radius from 0.5, they will stay away from each other. Currently, they're staying away 0.5 from each other. So if each capsule is about, um, I'm not sure what the radius of an actual capsule is, is, I think they're one high, so that would make them about 0.5 across. And so they're sort of staying about another half a distance away from anybody else, which will kind of um, avoid a full-on collision with each other. If you put this down to zero, then you're going to find them doing a lot of bumping into each other. But if you ramp this up, let's say, let's make it five, then they will stay away. And I've only done it for one in this case. Let me move this sphere up there, grab all of these capsules and change their avoidance radio to five. Okay, and then press play. Okay, and you can see the dilemma that that gives them. See how they're nice and far apart, but there's not enough room for them on the sidewalk. So it is pushing them into the road and it's now preventing them from even moving. And they kind of reached a bit of an equilibrium around here of where they can go. So obviously that's not going to work for us. Um, let's put that back down to, uh, what was it, 0.5? We put it down to 1, which is twice the distance away then they will at least give each other a bit of space. And you can see that now that they are doing that. Yeah, okay, so that is the end of this three-part tutorial um, and a look at a few different components of the NavMesh system and the NavMesh agents and how you could really create something quite powerful with this really nice, simple system that's built in to Unity. So um, I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you in my next tutorial. Remember, if you want to know more about programming of AI in Unity, then check out my Udemy course devoted to all types of AI for controlling NPC behavior. And if you'd like to support this channel and see more great tutorials come up for free on YouTube, then consider visiting my Patreon page and signing up and have a look at all the different benefits that you will get, which includes free access to the Udemy courses. And one more thing, please subscribe and help to make this channel the most popular Unity tutorial channel on YouTube.